We are continuing on our series of liquid simulation for small scale scenes. In this video, we are going to learn how emitter settings work like velocity, noise and how you can animate them. Also, we are going to learn how you can create mesh out of liquid simulations along with surface tension. So without any delay, let's jump into 3ds Max. I have opened a blank scene here in 3ds Max. Now let's just create our emitter. So we are going to take a cylinder here and I'm just going to create something like this. Okay, now let's just take it upwards here and I'm going to create a grid here in which I'm going to emit our liquid. So we are going to click on our Phoenix liquid simulator and we are just going to make this grid bigger here. Let's just now click and drag it something like this and let's just do something like this here. Okay, we are going to move it downward here our emitter because as you guys know from our first video in introduction to Phoenix FD for small scale you need to make sure that your emitter is inside your grid here okay if you are new to Phoenix FD you can check out that first video so you can follow along this series of Phoenix FD for small scale simulation now let's just create our emitter here so we are going to create our liquid source for this and we are going to add our emitter to this liquid source so let's just click on add and let's just click this okay now if I click on play, you can see our emitter is basically emitting the liquid in our, to our grid. So now let's just quickly do some settings as we have seen in first lecture. So let's just go to our grid here and we are going to make sure that our jam both is in X, Y and Z as well. Okay, and let's just re-simulate it again. And now you can see it's looking something like this and we are getting this simulation. Now from last session, if you know, if you want, don't want the repetition here you know that you need to go to dynamics and increase the steps per frame. So let's just do that also. Okay, so let's just increase the steps per frame to let's say 4 here. And if I play it again, now you can see we have avoided that repetition and now we are getting this beautiful simulation here. Now let's just move forward here. Let's look at our uh, emitter settings, our liquid source settings. So let's just click on this. Now you can see the speed of emitter emitting the liquid is really fast here. Now let's say you want to decrease this velocity or you want to increase this velocity of that emitter for that you need to select your liquid source and here you will find the outgoing velocity. Now it depends on the project that you are creating and the reference that you have you need to play with the outgoing velocity also. So let's just play with the outgoing velocity let's just do 10 here and let's just play it again and now you can see it's not emitting that much fast basically it's not that much fast compared to our 50 here. And now you can see this is looking nice. Now let's just stop this here. Let's just do 25 for now. Okay, let me just play it here. And now you can see we are emitting with the velocity of 25 centimeter here. Okay, now you can see this is a continuous emission here and we are getting this continuous pattern. Now let's say if you want to break this pattern, there is a parameter for that which we call here noise. So noise you can imagine is just like a turbulence here. So let's just play with the noise, don't go it way too much like 0.75 or else it will just emit the liquid from all the sides and it will not look that much realistic as you can see here, okay. So now you can see it's looking something like this here. Now let's say if you want to increase your velocity here, let's say to 100 and you are keeping your noise to 0.75, it is going to look something like this, okay. So you need to play with your liquid settings here your emitter source settings here and you need to make sure that you don't go too much high like one also so if i play it here you can see it's looking like this and it's not looking that realistic here okay so let's just do point four here and let's just do a outgoing velocity of let's say 40 here and now if i play this is going to look realistic as well and now you can see we are breaking that pattern which was going like straight here now let's say guys you want to get your emitter to emit liquid till 25 frames only and then you want to just stop the emitter from emitting the liquid here. So how you can do that? For that you need to animate the outgoing velocity here. So it's really easy. First thing that you need to do is just turn on this auto key here. Okay, just go to 25th frame. Let's say we want to activate it till 25th only and then just do the outgoing velocity to zero. And now you can see this red color. This red colors mean there is a key here. Okay, now what will happen guys, if I just uh, turn off this auto key, you will see that we are animating this outgoing velocity. So it's going from 40 
टू जीरो विच इज नॉट गोइंग टू लुक गुड ओके वॉट वी वॉन्ट वी वॉन्ट अवर एमिटर टू एमिट टिल ट्वेंटी फोर ऑन द आउट गोइंग वेलोसिटी ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव और फोर्टी एंड देन वी वॉन्ट ऑन ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ फ्रेम टू बी जीरो सो वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू वी आर गोइंग टू गो ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ फ्रेम हियर ओके सो वन फ्रेम बैक एंड वी आर गोइंग टू अगेन टर्न ऑन द ऑटो की एंड वी आर गोइंग टू मेक श्योर दैट आउट गोइंग वेलोसिटी इज फोर्टी ईयर एंड अगेन टर्न ऑफ दिस ऑटो की एंड नाव यू कैन सी दिस इज द सेम फ्रॉम जीरो टू ट्वेंटी फोर इट्स फोर्टी एंड ऑन ट्वेंटी फाइव इट्स लाइक जीरो सो नाउ वॉट विल हैपन लेट मी जस्ट शो यू सो इफ आई क्लिक ऑन प्ले इयर यू विल सी टेल ट्वेंटी फोर इट विल एमिट द लिक्विड एंड ऑन ट्वेंटी फाइव इट विल क्लोज सो सी एंड नाव यू कैन सी इट हैज स्टॉप एमिटिंग द लिक्विड इयर एंड नाव यू कैन सी अवर लिक्विड इज इयर ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इजी इट इज टू जस्ट disable the liquid uh, um to some frames only if you want and you can enable it also again so let's say after of uh, 50 you want to emit liquid again okay so you can again play with your outgoing velocity animation by doing the auto key and then you can again start pouring the liquid here now you can see here we are emitting particles from whole object here so if i click on play here again you can see we are emitting particles from whole cylinder let's say we want to emit it from only the down polygon how you can do that so for that you need to have a polygon id so let me show you that also so what we are going to do we are going to delete the simulation we are going to select the sphere we are going to right click here and we are going to convert it to editable poly now we are going to zoom it we are going to press four key so four will select my polygon here and i am going to give a material id here so if you scroll here you will find a polygon material id let's just set this to let's say maybe 7 okay just remember this that 7 material id will emit the particles and rest you need to give another material id so you can do a invert selection by pressing control and shift i or else you can go to edit and do a select invert okay so it's control i so you can just press control i and it will select the inverted polygons which are not selected and let's just give it a id of 2 okay so now you can see this is having a 7 id and rest of all is having a 2 id okay now we need to tell phoenix fd also that we have done this so let's just go out of this editable poly mode let's just select this liquid again and if you scroll downwards here no you will find that you are having a polygon id here okay so we want to emit here from our this down polygon here so if you remember our polygon id was set to 7 here so let's just write here 7 and let's just play it again and now you can see it's only emitting from that polygon so this scenario is basically used in tap water in fountains okay where you want to have a polygon a certain polygon from where the liquid will come out but as you guys can see we are not emitting that much particles so we need to increase the particles count also so we are going to do that also so for that you need to select your grid here okay you need to increase the resolution but before increasing the resolution let me show you how does this look in the final render okay so for that you need to have the mesh on so we are going to go downwards here and we are going to go to preview okay in preview you need to make sure that show mesh is turned on and this is how it will look when you render it this is looking really bad because we are not emitting that much particles okay so what we are going to do we are going to increase the resolution but i also want to hide the particles because if you see we are also seeing the particles here this white dots so what we are going to do we are going to just turn off this particle preview here and now you can see only mesh here okay so let's just increase the resolution and play it again it totally depends at how much you want to increase the grid resolution okay on your system I am having a really good system so I am going to just increase the resolution till maybe 5 million here and I am going to click on play again and now you can see we have increased the particles count here okay so if you see in simulation tab you can see we are now emitting around 13000 liquid okay so it's around 14600 particles so let's just increase it way more so what you can do you can just click on increase resolution so now it's around 1 crore okay so what we are going to do we are again going to click on play and now you can see it's taking some time to simulate and now you can see we are having some really good particle count 
around like 16,000, 17,000, 18,000 and it is going to increase till 24 frame and then it is going to stop here. Okay. So you can create a tap water animation by using this technique here. Okay. And it is going to take some time to settle the liquid because it is going to bounce back here. Okay. And now you can see it's looking something like this here. Now let's say you want to increase the velocity and all that stuff. Now you know how you can do that also. Okay. So let's just click on pause here again. Let's just go back here. And now you can see it's not looking that much smooth here, the liquid. So what you can do, you can just increase the resolution of this mesh here. So how you can do that, you need to go downwards again. Okay. Then you need to go to your rendering tab. And here you will find a mesh smoothing option. Okay. So let's just increase the smoothness to five here. And now you can see our liquid is really smooth here. Okay. So now if you see here also, the liquid is way too smooth and this is looking nice here. And if you are thinking that, okay, I want to just add an object, my liquid should hit that object here. It's really easy. So you just need to create that object. So let's just create our teapot here in our center frame, something like this. And now if I click on play, it will just add this object as a collider. And now you can see it's colliding with our teapot here. Okay. So this is looking nice. See. Okay. Now let's just stop it here because I want to show you certain things here. Now, if you see here, it's just hitting our surface and you can see we are getting this big strands here of our particles. Okay. If you want, you can just make sure that they are more longer. For that, you need to select this here. And here, if you scroll downwards in dynamic tab, you will find here what we call a surface tension. Okay. So if I give a strength of 0.01, okay, or 0.02, and if I play it again, you will find that the strengths that are going to hit after uh, hitting our object, they are going to be much, much bigger here. Okay. Now you can see we are getting this big strands here. So if you want this big strands, you need to increase the surface tension strength here and you will find this big strands here. Okay. So he here you can use this big strands and get some really cool result depending on your reference here. Okay. So this is a really cool feature that you can use to get that big long tendrils also. We, ca we call it tendrils. You can see here how big they are. Okay. So let's just stop it again. One more thing I want to show you before ending this. Let's say you want to fill this grid here with some liquid and after that this liquid will hit that liquid. So it's really easy. You need to turn this initial fill up percentage. And if I click on play, you will find that it's going to fill 50% here. You can see now I don't want this much. I want only let's say 5%. So I can type here 5% and if I click play again, you will see my half teapot is into the water and half teapot is outside the water here. See, so this is now going to hit the teapot and it's going to hit this liquid and you will get some really good ripples also. Okay. So let it just play for some frames so you can see the result here. And here you can see we are getting some really good ripples also. Okay. And then you can easily apply a water material and render it out. In next session, we are going to start with some projects here. And we are going to look and look at each and every attribute like time scale is there, viscosity is there. We are going to create some projects and see each and every attribute in that project. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please press that like button. If you like this video, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys. Bye bye.